Is there a soul? How can it be proved? Have you ever had a patient who committed suicide? A young man that we treated with drugs came to me. He put his hand into his pocket and pulled out a rope. He said, I was about to hang myself. I changed my mind after your treatment. Can you imagine? He was carrying a rope in his pocket to hang himself. He sat in the toilet for eight hours and couldn't get out. He walked around the house with no clothes, afraid of urinary incontinence. I had a patient who stayed in the bath for a day and a half. He always kept his hand in the air. He bathed, got out, and went in again for a day and a half. Professor, have you ever had a patient who committed suicide? Suicidal ideation works like this. A person has suicidal thoughts, but thoughts alone are not enough. Other than suicidal ideation, there must be suicidal intent. Suicidal intent also is not enough. The person has to have a plan. The plan is also not enough. There has to be an attempt. There has to be a failed attempt. A person can have suicidal thoughts, but for some, these thoughts aren't very realistic. Some people have a fear of suicide. They think they're going to commit suicide. These have to be separated. I can also tell you about a case of the treatment of a resistant patient. A teenager came in and we gave him medicine, but he didn't get well. So, we gave him an electrical treatment. After two, three sessions, the patient came and said, Hey, Mr. Doctor. He put his hand in his pocket and pulled out a rope and said, I was about to hang myself, but I changed my mind after your treatment. Imagine, he was carrying a rope in his pocket to hang himself. If he didn't get any result from us, he would have hanged himself. For example, after the treatment, he left with a big smile. We have a warning system about suicide for patients who are hospitalized right now. If the doctor says suicide risk, he puts a label on the envelope. Because of the label, we keep that patient in a high security ward. Even the windows of the clinic have shatterproof glass. Nurses check patients and follow up with them for continuous high security. Fortunately, we haven't had any suicide incidents in the institution. God willing, there won't be any. What was the psychological problem of your most challenging patient? Most challenging patients for us are OCD patients. Patients with obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD. It wasn't said aloud in my internship years, but was called soul cancer. Think about it. Most of the doctors wouldn't want to deal with them. Thankfully, there is an OCD screening test called Yale Brown to take those patients in and make them better. We use that skill pre-treatment and post-treatment. The upper limit is 40. If it is 40 points, the patient is in advanced stage. They're almost on the verge of schizophrenia. We take them in with a score of 36 to 40. We treat them until their score drops to 10 to 12. The last patient we admitted to the hospital was sitting in the toilet for eight hours. Imagine, he couldn't get out of the toilet for eight hours. He walked around the house without clothes due to fear of urinary incontinence. There were wounds on his knees because of sitting in the toilet for hours. I know a patient who was in the bathroom for a day and a half. He always kept his hands in the air, not touching anything. He bathed, got out, went in again for a day and a half. He kept his hands in the air for a day and a half. Taking 36 to 40 points down to 10 to 12 means that the patient has returned to normal. I mean, you bring a person back to life. The most challenging ones bring out the most joy when they get better. When the patient gets better and says, God bless you, something that cannot be measured with anything. The way they rejoice, the way they pray for you, really. If you ask me what is the greatest source of motivation, this is it. So, Professor, what advice would you give to OCD patients watching this video? It goes from simple anxiety to obsessive compulsive disorder. What is simple anxiety? Simple anxiety comes to all of us from time to time. For example, a mother holds her child in her arms. She goes near a window and immediately a thought comes to her mind. It says, would you throw your child out of the window? What if you do? Imagine how terrifying it is for a mother. She goes to the kitchen and thinks, stick the knife in your child. What does a sane person do? She says, I know myself, what a silly thought, and clears her mind. Sensitive people think, what kind of person am I? How can you stick a knife in a kid? How can I think about that? What a despicable person I am. How can I do that? They feel anger and guilt, but these are just thoughts born of anxiety. These thoughts are referred to in our religious literature as whispers from the devil. There is a beautiful phrase in the 21st word of Risale Nur. If you see it big, it will grow. If you see it small, it will shrink. This is actually a method we use in treatment. But the Zaman wrote this method in the 1920s. It's fascinating. I find it very interesting. This method works well before anxiety takes root in the brain. Once it takes root, this method doesn't work anymore. 
How does it take root? If a person thinks about that anxiety for 59 minutes out of 60 minutes, it gains automation by repeating itself over and over again in the brain. Once it gets automation, our brain has a network that works through a system of networks. This network system is like a path for normal people. But in the brain of someone obsessed with a subject, there is a network responsible for those paths, and those paths turn into highways. It expands tremendously, becoming measurable in the brain. When you put that person through an MRI machine, it glows. The mental suggestion is insufficient. You cannot treat those people with therapy. In such cases, physical, biological interventions are needed. They are given a high dose of what we call a supra-therapeutic dose of drugs. After that, therapy starts when specific improvement is achieved. Sometimes even the drugs are not enough concerning the severity of the disorder. So we are using magnetic treatments to cure that area of the brain and we're even using enhanced magnetic therapies. In other words, we provoke the person to imagine the subject they are obsessed with. We record a video of the patient and show it to them. When they start imagining, we give the brain a magnetic stimulus. It fixes them right away. They get 29 sessions. That is the protocol. After that, we administer that treatment. The people we administer that treatment get better superbly well. Our results are over 90%. This is something we didn't anticipate beforehand. We are surprised but thankful for getting these results from those cases. Thank God the name soul cancer for OCD has become something we can laugh about now. If there are such cases, I claim that it is almost necessary to hospitalize them. We can treat them. No one should despair. One of my mottos is this hadith, which means there is a cure for every disease. I must do everything I can to make sure a patient gets better. After all, I am just a means for the cure. God bestows the cure. Our bodies work so perfectly. We just find the missing link, introduce a drug to the body, and it fixes the missing link. That's all there is to it. What is the most helpful therapy method for the human soul? A sick person may have depression, schizophrenia, addiction, bipolar disorder, or OCD. There are biological and physical aspects to these people. You can make them better with treatment. After that, the important thing for them is not to get sick again. The second important thing is for healthy people to not get sick. For these two points, a person's spiritual condition plays an important role. Like what? Let's assume someone is on a bus. If he gets on a bus and thinks, this bus belongs only to me, it should only serve me, I'm like the only passenger on this bus, he constantly interferes with the driver because he doesn't trust the driver. He ignores other people, turns on the air conditioning, and plays with the instrument panel. No one likes such a person. If he crosses the line, they will say, you cross the line and kick him out of the first stop. In this ship we call life, we are not the only passengers on it. The ship doesn't belong to you alone. When a person prepares for treatment, someone who is spiritually strong is lucky. Why? You live in a building. You will behave differently if you are a landlord or a tenant, right? I am a tenant. I am a guest on this earth. Life on earth is not the real one. There is another life after this life. I am a guest here temporarily. If you think like this, you will behave differently. You owe rent to the landlord. What I'm trying to say is, being a good person is to pay the rent for our existence. It is not just a virtue. So if you are not a stone, tree, soil, bird, or bug, if you are created as a human being and the Creator bestowed you the rank of the noblest creature of all, it is your duty to remember the Creator and act by the information His messengers brought. If He takes you into His heaven, it is out of His grace. For Him, mankind must know their place. Those with solid faith say, There is an omniscient one who controls everything, has everything. I must put my trust in Him and seek refuge in Him so that he can find the most excellent medicine for his despair. But someone who has no faith falls at doctor's feet when facing an illness. He can't see the creator behind the causes. He becomes a slave to medicine or the causes. However, the disease, the doctor, and the medicine are all causes. The cure is from God, but he can't see it. Although medicine has progressed, the COVID pandemic has shown so many issues that medicine is no help. We couldn't touch anything with our hands or hug our loved ones. We had concerns for our health. We lost our comfort and the peace of our bodies was quashed. So, Professor, is there really a soul? How can we prove it? Soul, it is something that our brain, mind, consciousness, science is most interested in the relations between these now. You know, in 2013, Obama started the Brain Project and in 2015, it went into phase two. There's personalized treatment, 
There's brain research and there's genetic research in it. These studies led us to this right now. The research field of brain investigates soul brain, soul body relationship, and there we came across quantum. Currently, neuroquantology is the most important field of science. In creation, what we call the soul is part of science, and our brain is like a computer. The soul is a program, and external intelligence is needed to protect the soul program. What best describes the soul is the use of the computer metaphor. The electronic circuits in a computer, hard drive, etc. are called hardware. And then there's the software. Without the software, the hardware is useless. It only weighs a kilogram. A computer is made of iron, carbon, and aluminum, but its software makes it a computer. After the software was developed, it became easier to understand the soul. We understood that the soul had to be there. The soul is something we cannot describe or understand, but is also necessary. If a database is necessary, the power that creates it is a necessary being, the creator. The creator has to be the master of the quantum universe as well. What attributes would the creator have to be the master of the quantum universe? He can't be the god of animalists, pantheists, or worshippers of nature. The only thing suitable for this is the attribute of God called Tawhid, the oneness of Allah. There are ways that lead to the one true path. Positive science and observation are one of these ways. Reasoning is one of these ways. Einstein, who used these, was asked, Do you believe in God? And he said, I believe in the God of Spinoza. I searched Spinoza's God. Spinoza is a pantheist and accepts nature as God. He said, There has to be intelligence in nature. There's the intelligence we don't see. Nature is ingenious, calculates everything, does everything well. So he saw nature as God as a pantheist. But I look at the nature. For it to be so, there must be a council of trees, birds, bugs, wind, and rain. That council must come together, pass laws, establish rules, and control the system. It's not possible. It's not possible, I say it from this perspective. Maybe not directly. But think about those bees. You know, they're fascinating creatures. They fertilize the plants, where bees dwindle, the trees bloom a lot and do not bear fruit. They created a mathematical model to see what would happen if the bees disappeared. The earth will become a wasteland after 50 years if the bees disappear. All activity of life will stop. There will be just water and soil. What if people were to disappear from the universe? They created another model for that. After 50 years, the earth would be greener and more beautiful. If the earth is better off with mankind's extinction, Nature can't create mankind. So, the Creator sent mankind to the earth specifically from the outside. And He provided a temporary place to them here. When you think like that, you know your place. Are there any books you recommend that should be read? First of all, all classical books need to be read. Some passionate about psychiatry and psychology should read all of Freud's books. Also, there is a book by Avicenna, The Canon of Medicine. Including this, all of them should be read. But the first book a person should read is the Qur'an, contains the message given to him by the creator of this universe. He should read the Qur'an keeping the question, what does the creator of the universe is saying to me in mind? Science is interested in how the universe works. Religious sciences are related to reasons for the existence of the universe. If you ask, why did God create this? How did he create this? You will find the answers with positive sciences. If you ask, why did he create? You will find answers with philosophy and religious sciences. The first book to read is the Holy Quran. The second book is the universe itself. The third book to be read is books of the Maulana of this era, Imam al-Rabani of this century, al-Ghazali of this period, Badiya Zaman. We know that people's characteristics are categorized by different names. As a psychiatrist, how do you analyze our Prophet's peace be upon him character? The most remarkable feature of our Prophet peace be upon him is his leadership. One cannot be a leader of any society when he can't be a leader of himself or his family. He cannot lead his company or his work. The first rule of leadership is to be the leader of yourself. This is what I see in our Prophet peace be upon him. One who leads himself can guide others and be a good example. His influence increases over them. It's called neural leadership, self-management of one's own brain. It is crucial to manage the emotion thought behavior triangle in your brain. For example, some people have a high level of knowledge. Some people become enlightened. They know sciences exceptionally well. 
but they can't do much good for other people because of their missing behavioral skills. I look at Rasulullah, peace be upon him. He had idealism, realism, and activism at the same time. Leaders have three pivots, and he managed them all the best. Therefore, as a human being, following the life of Rasulullah, peace be upon him, is a role model, is the best example that can be recommended to a Muslim. The Sunnah is like road signs for us. He has many road signs, all of which can be proved that we can follow in our life. He separated the role of servitude from the role of leadership. He said, I am the servant and messenger of God. When people over-respected him, he said, I am not the king. He said, I am a prophet. And in saying so, showed humility. Along with those roles, he showed his humility superbly. Having all the characteristics of being human, the messenger of God is the best role model. Thank you for sharing your Thank valuable you so time with us. Don't mention it. Hello brothers and sisters and thank you for watching the video. If you want to take a look at more of our videos like this, you can check the playlists we created specifically for you on the right or you can check out our latest videos on the left. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel so that we can reach and benefit more people. See you.